Our next presenter will be Adele Buckley with uh, Canadian Pugwash, and she'll give us, uh, she's much more knowledgeable about nuclear weapons free zones than I am, and she can ex explain how those work. <laughs> Adele? Um, yeah, I, I think <laughs> I think it's okay now. Uh, <clears throat> You are screen sharing. Okay, that's fine. And we also need to know that um, global security is actually diminished by uh, keeping nuclear weapons in the Arctic. Of course, we know there are no um, weapons there. Uh, uh, there are no targets in the Arctic, uh, at, at least at present, and, and submarines uh, can hide there, uh, less so, no ice, uh, and, and they deliver uh, devastating consequences to many parts of the world. So we uh, we wish to uh, um, not to not continue that. Um, so uh, we want to sustain peace and cooperation in the Arctic because that's where we are now. Um, the the surface of the ocean is demilitarized. Many parts of the Arctic are most of the Arctic is demilitarized uh, above the Arctic Circle. There certainly are um, uh, military bases in various places, but um, demilitarized from, our, from uh, the situation we're interested in. We need to adapt the en environment in so many ways. Human security is really at risk in, in uh, so many different uh, aspects of it. Uh, particularly food and uh, permafrost uh, uh, collapsing, uh, then we, we need and we have cooperative governance in various ways because it's necessary. Uh, there's resources there. Everybody wants to benefit from, by exploiting them. We need off limits. And so we need to begin now uh, to get the Arctic policy of, uh, uh, to be nuclear weapon free and starting with the uh, nu nuclear weapons free states. And this is, this is really important um, because what happens if you have an, a nuclear weapon free zone in the Arctic, uh, you, will, you will have uh, uh, really uh, a test place where all sorts of things under a treaty, because this is a, a, a legal treaty under the UN when you get there, uh, that, that can be tested ahead of time to see how they work, like verification and, and many other aspects of nuclear weapon free zone, so as to uh, be confidence building to the rest of the world that if we would get rid of nuclear weapons, these, these methods have been tested and so on. So that would be really useful. Uh, we, we've got uh, in the Arctic nations, remember the map, look from above uh, uh, at the North Pole, we've got the non-nuclear weapon states, Canada, Denmark, Iceland, Norway. Uh, unfortunately, these are members of NATO, meaning they're nuclear weapon dependent, but at least they're nuclear weapon free. And then there's Sweden and Finland, which also don't have uh, any uh, territory on the ocean, but they are uh, Arctic states. And then there's the nuclear weapon states, and we know who they are uh, all too well. So um, the UN has set principles. They, they did this in 1975, uh, <clears throat> and you've heard about them. Um, here's the, an important thing, uh, because you must uh, have the regions in the state, in, in the region that wants to be a nuclear weapon free zone, they have to arrive freely at the decision that they want to do it. So that's important and you can imagine that how, how it might be sort of difficult, to put it mildly, to get the uh, Russia and the US. Now we're just talking about some parts of the Arctic. We're not talking about the entire countries of those two, two states. Nevertheless, this is extremely difficult. Uh, and, and if you get one, it has to be verifiable and limited duration. And in the end, nuclear weapon states have to ratify protocols in their own parliaments 
to recognize the treaty and offer what is called negative security assurances. So um, you've seen this. Um, that's the thing. Uh, the, there's several dates uh, that I, I've put here, and you can see a lot more about this on the UN if you wish to. There's also related things like the Seabed Treaty, Svalbard, and the Outer Space Treaty, which also support and are nuclear weapon free. Then let's have a look at what Craig showed you already. This is the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Um, the nautical boundary, which is for sure absolutely the territory of the country, 12 miles out. Then there's the, the exclusive economic zone, 200 miles out. And if you can prove certain undersea things, and there, there is work going on at the UN, you may have other claims. But um, have a look. And you see US, um, Russia, um, sort of huge participants. But this other group is interesting because here we have Iceland, we have um, Norway, we have Greenland, and we have Canada. They're all not nuclear weapon states, and they all could, in their own territory, uh, have a nuclear weapon free zone. Uh, if they approached the UN and did all the things that are required. So um, the circumpolar states that are already free of nuclear weapons uh, are in an ideal position to, um, one, they could start by having an, a statement in their Arctic security policy that they, they favor a nuclear weapon free zone in the Arctic. Um, Denmark has one, nobody else does, and it would be an excellent start and an achievement in the right direction. And they could host the circumpolar non-nuclear weapon states to begin discussions if they, uh, that would be a, a very good and peaceful move. Um, so this, these are, if the goal is an Arctic nuclear weapon free zone, then um, the non-nuclear weapon states meet and begin no negotiations. Then they agree on a plan for an Arctic nuclear weapon free zone on their territory. And then they approach the United Nations Office of Disarmament Affairs to say, we want to do this. And then the UN helps them in many different ways, but they can't have mu much help from the UN until they approach as, as a group and say, we want to do it. Um, and um, another way of gathering, which is usual, a support, uh, you, you go to the UN First Committee, uh, which meets uh, every, uh, every time the non-proliferation treaty groups meet. Uh, at, well, sorry, it, it meets every fall, um, every year, uh, not, not the non-proliferation treaty. Anyway, you go there, you, 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 the diplomats and others, speak to their colleagues to try to get support because now a vote will be coming up. Uh, you go to the UN General Assembly, uh, the non-nuclear weapon states introduce a resolution for an Arctic nuclear weapon free zone in their region. And, and then, uh, then there's a vote. So with this, uh, we would love to see this. Um, all of the present nuclear weapon uh, free zones have taken rather a long time, I mean, 10 or 20 years. Really, that's unfortunately the case. It would be nice if we could accelerate it, but this is, uh, this is a long-winded thing. Uh, however, uh, the faster that we start, the faster, the faster that the nations start, that, that governments that can start do start, that's important. So, um, so after we had a nuclear weapon-free zone, well, now we've got part of the Arctic covered, but what, what would we do then? Well, that group of states needs to approach the US and Russia proposing the Arctic nuclear weapon free zone. Of course, they're not very likely to be thrilled to do that. Uh, but in fact, um, what happens here is, is that there's a, there would be a, a regional and global pressure all around. In fact, there's the Treaty for the uh, Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which you have probably heard of, which is in play at the moment. 
And, and so all of that is global pressure, like do something. And we're not talking about the entire US and Russia territory. We're talking about just the Arctic territory. So you begin maybe with eliminating certain kinds of submarines that have nuclear weapons on them. And in time, uh, you know, um, with optimism, they join. And then um, there, this genuinely could be a tipping point because, because as I said, it, it's a place where you can exercise um, some of the aspects that you'd like to try out before you really become nuclear weapon free in the entire world. I just give you this map because there, there certainly is discussion as to what <laughs> what territory would we do. Well, there's the Arctic Circle. Uh, we could do um, just uh, places that are, um, you know, just off off the coast. Um, we could do um, the uh, uh, search and rescue agreement boundaries, which are all extremely well defined uh, right now, and that would be, you know, a sort of speed up because you don't have to define new boundaries; it's, they're already defined. So, um, so who wants it? Well, uh, the UN wants it. Would stands ready to help. Civil society wants it, as you know. That's who we all are. Uh, the Inuit Circumpolar Council wants it. The population of the Arctic has been surveyed. They want it. Uh, the International Committee of the Red Cross is very strong on this. And the occasional government, uh, not Canada, not US, but wants it. So um, UN, um, in fact, uh, we, if we wanted some help from the UN, there is one thing that could be done is commission an in-depth review of Arctic nuclear weapon free zone issues potential for, uh, there are a lot of studies done by the UN, ma sort of massive, uh, important uh, technical and learned work, uh, which, uh, which, which is, would be very useful in this regard. Um, we've got the uh, NPT Treaty Article 7. We've got um, every time there's a review conference, and there was to be one, but in for, unfortunately, of course, COVID-19 fixed that, but there will probably be one uh, in 2021 uh, NPT Review Conference. And at that time, the treaties, uh, the, every nation that has already a nuclear weapon free zone and has established it they meet and and uh they don't they're not exclusive in their meeting so you could deal with that um one thing that you can't do uh unless there's there's some in back door way in you cannot go to the diplomats conferences all you can really do is make a uh a civil society seminar uh, widely advertised. This is done all the time. There are many of them at the review conferences and, and uh, hope that you get the diplomats to attend. So that's, that's, you cannot attend the sessions of the UN uh, review people. Uh, you can look at them from a, a balcony and listen. That's all you can do. So uh, that's important to know. And of course, Pugwash Conferences supports them. Um, and then this is a quote from a conference in Astana, Kazakhstan, the retiring under Secretary General for disarmament and, and uh, past president of uh, now. So um, let's see, what if? Well, if we don't do it, we get another theater of operations for militaries of the world and we don't get preservation of the Arctic Ocean surface Military, not militarized. No, we don't. And the Arctic Council observers, who are all nuclear weapon states, you see their names here. They send. Uh, not only do the U.S. and Russia do it, but China, Britain, France, India. They all send submarines to the Arctic. Uh, you get more. Uh, you get circumpolar nations who are NATO members consider exercises in and near the Arctic, and uh, of course you have environmental consequences. So um, I think uh, I, I would certainly encourage you to go to um, the uh, Can Canadian Pugwash uh, uh, sponsored discussion group 
uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff there. Sometimes there's discussion, sometimes people just share papers. Um, and, and you can, uh, if you go to this uh, Arctic, nwfz.ca, uh, you will find a link to get you to look at this and join it if you wish. So that's it for my screen sharing. <laughs>